All right. So VMware has been bought by, bought by Broadcom, and apparently they are changing the pricing and layout of the enterprise class products, and people are getting very upset. So they're thinking about moving enterprise clients to other uh, products, and they're thinking about Proxmox. Now, I've used Proxmox, and it's very nice, but it's sort of like open office. It's an open source thing without very many frills. I don't think it's something an enterprise class customer can move to, uh, but we'll see. Certainly, this is very common when a company gets acquired. The new company sometimes kills it off completely. I thought it was kind of funny. You know, there's some app called Drizzly that will deliver booze to your door, and they just got bought by somebody else, like I think Uber, who is going to incorporate it in Uber Eats, but they're still advertising Drizzly, even though I, I think the Drizzly site is down and the service has stopped. Um, so, you know, in tech, companies come and go really fast. That's why you can't have any loyalty to a company in tech. Every company will just lay you off without a moment's thought, and you should just jump and go to another company. You'll probably jump every year or two forever. Um, and uh, even if you were to be loyal to a company, the company itself would get sold. <laughs> so <laughs> there's, uh, except for the huge ones, you know, like Google and, and Microsoft and such. Uh, so this is, it's sort of rare that you ever find this story. You can tell it's kind of implied. I mean, so one of the Chinese powerful hacking groups found a VMware zero day and weaponized it for two years before somebody finally figured it out and patched it. Uh, this is what all the intelligence agencies do and all the largest crime agencies. They try to find zero days, which are flaws with no known patch, and they try to, uh, those are the most powerful attacks, and they keep them going as long as they can, and they try to be as sneaky as possible so nobody finds out and patches it. But you usually never find out how long they knew it and how long they were exploiting it before you caught them, but here this time they have a timeline on it. Uh, this one got a lot of attention at the C3 conference. Every year Christmas in Germany, every year they have the Chaos Communication Congress. It is the most advanced technical security conference I've ever heard of. They have amazing mathematical binary exploits there of the kind we're going to talk about in this class. And this time, he explains how to read QR codes without a computer. He explains how they work, which is really, so this is it. It turns out that most of this is boilerplate. These are finder patterns, just to guide it. These are separators. Uh, these are timing patterns. And, the, and this is format information. So here's the, uh, the stuff in blue is the stuff that actually contains the data. <coughs> and it is incredibly simple. It's a series of numbers in binary. Um, so you can learn how to read it. And it's kind of fun. You can understand how these things work. Anyway. Um, I was very surprised and pleased to find this podcast called Error Code last night. Um, this is a podcast about operational technology security, which I'm having to learn for one of my consulting jobs, and I will be teaching a unofficial course in it starting in February. Um, this is um, security at power plants um, and water plants and factories and such, and it dates from an earlier time. Most of, the, most of the technology was developed in the 80s and 90s, before there was any security, and, and it has to be connected to the internet, and you have to somehow make that secure, and of course it hasn't worked that well, so he has a good description of it here, and I'll be, uh, I'll be teaching a course in it. I'm just still writing more projects for it now. Uh, this is pretty interesting. I've got, so you, I've seen night vision goggles. I haven't seen them in real life. Uh, maybe my students in the military have, but I see them on TV. They wear these things. They have like a green screen, and you see this ghostly green uh, image of the thing at night, because that's all it's doing is amplifying the light that's there, and there's not much light there. But what these things do is run it through AI to put back in the full definition picture and the color. So by running it through AI, um, you look at this thing at night and you see a beautiful picture of this bird like it was daytime. But of course, that means it's guessing. <laughs> and so I wonder how often you'll see the wrong thing, something that's not really there. You've probably seen the videos of a Tesla where the guy's driving the Tesla and something unexpected shows up like a shopping cart with a homeless person pushing it. And the Tesla says, is that an ambulance? Is it a police car? Is it a pedestrian? Maybe it's a dog. You know, it doesn't, it only has like 10 things it can recognize and it's not any of them. So it'll sort of jump around trying to fit these things that don't fit on the data. So I wonder how often it just makes up stuff. But anyway, they say it's just amazing and you can see things like it was daytime. I imagine under most circumstances, it probably works fine, giving you things like that. So that seems pretty exciting. Might be a fun thing to try out. Um, so another thing that's getting really popular is AI girlfriends. 
Um, ChatGPT is out there, and, it, and these chat models now have made it easy to customize them. And so a bunch of people are making girlfriends out of them. There are YouTube stars making specific YouTube AI versions of themselves to rent out to people. And um, this is getting on, and this is, of course, uh, I mean, I don't know if you guys might aren't as old as me, but I've been through every, every decade or so, everybody freaks out and says, the kids of today are gonna be ruined by this new thing that came out. If it's not the telephone, it's video games, the printing press, every new thing is gonna destroy the youth of America. So anyway, people are freaking out what this is gonna do. Um, and uh, the psychologists say it's probably gonna be pretty popular. They say, you know, uh, uh, they're, um, there are multiple reasons that people already find AI girlfriends compelling. Uh, so anyway, they, they describe it here from a psychological point of view, and I, it's a very interesting argument. Um, and I think it's probably true. Um, this will just be highly accepted more and more normal. By the way, um, it's already happening, been happening for a long time, uh, something I heard called a generation of unconscious homosexuals. Because if you go to AI dating sites, typically there are no women. All there are is men who have been paid to pretend to be women on those sites and flirt with you. So you think you're talking to a woman and you aren't. You're unconscious homosexual. <laughs> anyway, um, so in the same spirit, now we're going to have AI girlfriends, and that's probably what they're going to flood those sites with. Because I mean, as far as I know, there are probably some exceptions, but most dating sites just consist of a bunch of men looking for women. And this goes all the way back to the 60s. In the 60s, there was a, a radical magazine in Berkeley called the Berkeley Barb. And the way they funded it was the back page was personal ads, and all the personal ads was man seeks woman for sex. Man seeks woman for sex. This is the way it tends to be. And there were no apparent women available, and this is you know, a popular problem. Anyway, this one I thought was very interesting um, to talk, because it's extremely obvious that the young and even most large portions of the adult generations in the modern world have forgotten what the Nazis were. Because they're all building Nazis again. The Nazi party in Germany now has 30% of the votes. And as we see, the Nazi party in America is strong, is basically equivalent to the Republican party now. They've all come out openly. Nikki Haley won't even say there was any, ever any racism in America, which is an incredibly outrageous statement. <laughs> and she doesn't even know that slavery caused the Civil War. And it's just, she has, she, of course, she's not stupid enough to believe that. But like Trump, she knows that the white supremacists and the Nazis are part of her voting base, and she's not willing to write them off, which previous generations of Republicans did. Even 10 years ago, the Republican Party ejected Steve King for being a Nazi, and you couldn't be an open Nazi and be in the Republican Party. That was considered too extreme, but it is no longer considered too extreme here or in Austria or in many other countries, it's not just America, it's coming back. Anyway, this is a very interesting story, talking about this guy who knew his grandfather who was a Nazi and talks about him and about how he was charming and had a lot of good jokes and was always happy and always confident and also completely defended the Nazis and thought everything they did was true. And he tries to explain how he had, this is what apparently Trump has. He is charming to a certain group of people. They find him amusing and entertaining. They feel like he represents them. This is what Steve Bannon said. Steve Bannon was the brains behind Trump. He has an agenda to push, and he said, I need a front man that can sell this. And he said, Trump is the guy because he's like Archie Bunker. And see, I grew up, when I was a kid, I grew up on this All in the Family show uh, and with the leftists that are young, and Archie Bunker was the fascist who was old, and it never occurred to me until I heard that that my father thought Archie was the good guy. A whole generation of people thought Archie was the good guy. I was young, so I was, of course, sympathized with young characters. But he represents, he's basically the Donald Trump passion. But my dad was very, very bigoted and very proud of it and, and not ashamed of it at all. And uh, he was very upset when I didn't even know what the race of my playmates were. He thought that was the most important thing to know about them, and I didn't know anything about it. But anyway, it's, it's, it's uh, worth reading. And if you want to see any of these, you'll find them. You go to my site and click News. Uh, I guess that's enough of the news for today. Let me see.